Okay, Jay, earlier today, a chef and a normal cooked up a grilled cheese each. Oh. One of those <laughs> is in front of you. We just want you to try and identify who cooked it. Oh, what a great idea this was. Today, we're making grilled cheeses. We have a chef, Kush, who's been given five pounds of budget to create his. We have a normal Barry, who's been given an unlimited budget and a stack of ingredients to make his. Not only are they gonna to cook to their budget, but we're also gonna submit one of their creations to Jamie, who has no idea what's going on, to see if he can guess whether a chef or normal cooked it. So we wanna fool him as well. I'm excited, boys. I'm are excited. you excited? Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna fool Jamie. Let's fool Jamie. So I spent my money on uh, cheddar to get a nice punch. Mature cheddar has got a lot of flavour. Really expensive. Food prices have shot up. Dairy as well. So that was nearly half of my budget gone. I wanted a custardy centre, like a bechamel, to go a bit French. So I went for a, a packet cheddar cheese sauce. American cheese singles. We know they melt but don't split. Mustard for punch. Just some cheap Dijon mustard. And then my last 50p was on a bag of flour. With that, I made a sourdough for capture. So that cost me 50p. My sourdough starter was just flour and water that I made five, six years ago, so that was free. Some herbs from my garden in it. So they're pretty much free. Pick them each year, they grow back. And lastly, my lacto-fermented pickled jalapenos, which have been sitting in the studio since we reviewed them about a year ago now. And they cost me pretty much nothing. Some seeds a few years ago, written that cost off. So I'm adding a few simple flavours to a quite a traditional, I think, grilled cheese sandwich. Lovely. Baz, what is your thought process? I want to make the best grilled cheese I possibly can. So therefore, I'm kind of sticking within what I know. Sourdough as my bread. And then cheese is my favourite, goat's cheese. And I'm going to try and pair it with some Parmesan and maybe something cheddar-y. OK. Flavours-wise, chilli, fresh herbs. Mustard. Oh, no. A little bit of black truffle. Oh, and... Caramelized onions, so I've got to cook this quickly. Oh, add 300 ml of semi skim milk. Couldn't afford that, so I'm going to go with water. And I'm going to add a bit less to make it nice and thick. I can always add a bit more later. So we're not going to tell Jamie that Kush is working to a five pound budget. And I guess the sweet spot is if both of you create something so chefy that Jamie can't tell who cooked it. That, that's what I yeah. want to see. That's what I want to see. I want to go for like, Luxurious flavours like your truffle, but at the same time, I need to get chefy techniques in there. Yeah. So, what I'm going to try and do, you know, the um, uh, I'm going to do like a Parmesan skin. Nice. I'm going to do a cheddar skin on the outside of my sandwich. Oh, <laughs> why, are you cheddar, why are you cheddar skinning it? Uh, because I couldn't afford Parmesan. You've got far too many things going on. <laughs> but, right, I might drop the truffle. Therefore, I'm going for a goat's cheese and caramelised onion grilled cheese. I think that sounds Flary enough, but simple enough okay. to potentially fall. I'm also going to add a little bit of Cornish quartz. Cheddar. cheddar yeah. So you've got goat cheese, yep. sheep's pecorino, yep. and, and cow milk. Cow. Okay. It's a farmhouse grilled cheese. Yeah, it's a farmhouse. Okay. <laughs> yeah, lovely. That's great. So I'm looking for a really gooey, almost stringy cheese sauce that once it's down to just, you know, warm, it'll become nice and thick and custardy almost. Like and that's out of a packet? That's packet cheese sauce, homegrown herbs, and American cheese slices. I'm gonna whack a bit of cheddar in there, strain it off, chop some jalapenos through it, and that'll be the filling for my cheese sandwich. Baz, are you thinking of putting anything through your onions? My onions, I just want to be really, really, <laughs> really sweet and sticky. Um, I could... Splish of red wine? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you're looking to extract as much flavour as possible out of the high-end ingredients that you're using, right? I think so. I do, not doing much to them, just do what I do well. Whereas I don't do very well. <laughs> so I've got a deep roasting tray with a rack inside it. I'm going to put the cooked cheese toasty in here, some rosemary on the side, light the rosemary, wrap it in cling from the foil and smoke it, I hope. A little bit of sugar, a little bit of nutmeg. Oh, not straight away, that nutmeg is doing something to me. That smells amazing, Paz. 
So I use the uh, focaccia recipe from the sorted dough course that where uh, me and Mike teach you how to make fantastic bread. But this is plain flour, not bread flour. So it's a bit softer, it doesn't have as much chew because I could only afford plain flour. 50p for 500 gram bag, and that's a 500 gram loaf of flour plus water, sourdough starter, and a bit of salt. Oil, which is free, and some herbs from the garden. Pretty much standard recipe that I make weekly at home. That's salt. No! What have you done there, mate? That's salt. Oh, they're not in labelled jars, are they? That's really bad. Let's take it out, put it in that glass, wash the salt off it. Not my finest moment. I feel like Kush is already starting to think about cooking. I'm going to construct and cook it in a minute. Change your cheeses. Put some cream cheese in it. Mozzarella, that'll knock back the salt. You reckon? Yeah! So I'm cutting the bread into long slices. Oh wow, thin slices as well. Yeah, because I want to get a nice crisp, crusty layer. So he's biting through it and it kind of dissolves in his mouth. Wow. And then I can serve him free, because that's a Jamie portion. <laughs> Rosemary. Sliced up, mixed in with some cheeses. Am I, am, I, am I underthinking this? I mean, you've got no pickled element. That's the only thing that's probably. If you're looking for that lift, you haven't got anything. Oh, something fresh pickled, have you? And, and a bite. It needs a freshness. That's a great idea, Mike. I'm excited for now the balance of your flavours because I think they're going to work together really nicely. And that might be the type of thing that he eats and goes, that just works. So they've gone into your onions. This is good. This is interesting. So for catch is quite a moist bread, high hydration. So I'm going to pre-toast it and then build it just to drive off some moisture and get a bit more crunch. So I'm putting in some slices just so they partially melt. Just when you bite through it, you get little pockets of molten cheese inside. And the cheddar is going to go on the outside. So I've made enough cheese sauce to make about, I'd say, 12 sandwiches. Wow. And I've got a whole loaf of bread. So, yeah, I think I could make 12, 8 to 12 good grilled cheese sandwiches with this, five pounds. Well, <laughs> Kush, these look fantastic, mate. So what we're going to do is submit Barry's unlimited budget version to Jamie. And we're hoping that it's going to be so good and taste so amazing that we can fool him into thinking a chef cooked it. So you're buttering the ghee on the outside. Yeah, I'm thinking ghee because I don't need the fats from the butter to, for it to brown because I've got the cheese. And I also want it to be extra farmy. And I think ghee tastes more farmy than butter. Kush, how are you getting on, buddy? So I'm cooking. I have my uh, cheddar, cheddar cheese crisp in the base. I'm using the cheese fat, which is free, <laughs> to fry the sandwich. So rather than adding extra other flavours like butter, oil or ghee, I'm using cheddar fat. I'm looking for a light caramelly taint to the cheddar, just where there's a little wisp of smoke and steam coming off it. Then I'll take it out and redo the other side. Okay. If I have one attempt to make this, because I don't have any more cheddar, the pan's a bit too hot, I'm just taking it off, waving it around so I don't burn my cheddar. No go again, too. I love how much you're thinking about this, Baz. Mate, that looks amazing! If I had an egg, a little fried egg on the corner of this, a little bit of mushroom ketchup, uh, ooh, some candy tomatoes, delicious. So I've double wrapped it in foil and put a bit of plain oil on top of the herbs, blowtorch in to light the herbs and then quickly just seal the corner of the foil. <laughs> of course. So, Jay, it's going to work like this. I'm going to give you three lifelines for three stages. We want you to try and guess this in as fewer steps as possible. The first, your blindfold. If you can guess who made this by taste alone, well done you. If you want a second lifeline because you can't tell, we're going to let you remove your blindfold and look at it. If you still can't guess, you can use your third lifeline, which is to bring in the other dish so that you can compare the two before making your guess. Clear as mud? Absolutely. Excellent. So, get stuck in. 
What? Is that a good what? Or a there is some cheese in that. <laughs> wow. That's cheesier than a lot of the jokes that I tell. There's a crunch of like some oniony, pickly type thing. So in there you've got caramelised onions with some pickles mixed through and a pinch of nutmeg. It's delicious. It's the most cheesy grilled cheese I think I've ever had. Can you lock in a guess or would you like to uncover the blindfold and look at the other third of this grilled cheese? I want to see it. Okay, D blindfold. Ooh. Oh, I'm liking, I, so I didn't pick up on the cheese on the outside of the bread. It's got a pecorino and ghee coating. That is a lovely, lovely addition. In, in my head, this was a triple decker. That's why I pulled it apart and I was trying to pull it more apart. I thought it was a triple decker. I'm happy to take a guess. Okay. Oh. You sure you don't want to bring in the other to compare? Am, am, I, am I going to get to eat it anyway? Yeah. Yeah, fine. No, I don't eat it. <laughs> 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 I think this was cooked by Barry Taylor. Okay. It was so cheesy, it felt to me like there wasn't a forethought of balance provided within it. It felt like the herbs were there as a, I don't want to say the word afterthought, but weren't considered initially. It feels like I'll throw some herbs at it and it'll make it better. Okay. Interesting. Well, let's get the other out. Wow. Okay. This is encased in cheese. This is, it looks like it's got an omelette around the outside of it. <laughs> an an omelette? Straight down the middle. Nice one. Oh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm getting a bit of a kick of, but I can't tell whether it's like a, a chilli spice kick or whether it's the saltiness and the sharpness from the cheese. Okay. But there's no other layers in there okay. now of, you know, the caramelised onion chutney, um, herbs. It's very one dimensional. So you looked in your answer and you chose correctly. Oh. Barry did choose his first sandwich. <laughs> However, he did it with an unlimited budget. Grilled cheese B is one of eight that Kush made for five pounds. <laughs> well, comparing these two then is not That's on not the fair. cards, is it really? That's not fair. This was absolutely brilliant, but I think like when we've done these budget things before, sometimes you can go too, too indulgent and too far. And I think sometimes maybe that misses a little bit of the balance. But when you come back to this one, this is incredibly one dimensional, but knowing if you're working within ridiculous budgetary constraints, that's mad. How did you both find the challenge? I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching Barry build the process in his head as he went and change direction five or six times. Overthinking it, I make grilled cheese sandwich quite a lot at home, but I was just trying to add levels that I thought a chef might do. But in doing so, I probably made it too complicated. I mean, let's be honest, boys. I've got a fantastic lunch. <laughs> and there's seven more of these, you say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, over to you guys. How do you think our chef and our normal got on? And would you like to see more of these challenges? And what would you like the restrictions to be? Would it like to be timed? Um, oh dear. Um, let us know down in the comments. Um, give us all criteria. Uh, give the video a like and we'll make more of these. <laughs>